It's been 20 years since Chris Hanu was assassinated. The leader of the South African Communist Party will be remembered countrywide today. But before we chat to Human Settlements Minister Tokyo Sekhwale, let's take a look at this clip. There is a time to cry. I saw Chris Hani dead. Arrived about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not sure of my times after the call. And in the streets, as I entered, I found his daughter screaming. And in the driveway next to his car, his body lay. It was shot behind his ear, a direct shot. Another shot on his jaw, showing that it was a marksman. There could be other shots. I was devastated and could not search the body of Chris Honey for, for more shots. His wife is on his way here. Chris Honey, who lies in his driveway today, dead, was not a poet, was not a shopkeeper, was not a musician. He was a revolutionary. We now speak to our Human Settlements Minister, Mr. Tokyo Sukhwal. That on that day, we all remember this day, we all, we all glued in front of our TVs. It was, it, was, it was an occasion that each and every South African that was alive at that time thought that our country was at the precipice and it was going to burn. We were right at the point of a civil war. Precipice is right. We're just about to fall through. It should be important to note that the arrests of Walus and Clive Derby Lewis were caused by a white woman. In that situation where the country could have broken into black and white in the civil war, it was a white woman who identified the killers. And it was a white lady, a governor of the bank today, Jill Marcus, who was standing with us and calling for calm and peace. She was a soldier as well, a member of whom controversies. Um, it, was, it was a Mandela who came in the evening to calm the people. Eventually, Madiba became, on that day, chief, uh, de facto president. Uh, Chris Honey had left us um, under very difficult circumstances because the negotiations were on and had to be suspended. And we had to say to the Clark and others with the other side of the table, we want a date. There's no prevarication that we'll accept anymore. There must be a date set in South Africa for elections. And that date was the 27th of April. So forever people must remember the date of the 27th of April, which is our National Freedom Day, was set at Codessa as a result of, of the pressure that we put mm -hmm. arising out of Chris because we had to give our people something. Mm -hmm. But couldn't just pacify them. People were in, had had... You know, in Africa, it was, it was the riots in, in, in yeah, Bopatong. Yeah. It was the violence that was you happening in Shabvi. It was the East Rand that was also uh, uh, burning yes, up in it flames. Was it was the Red in Cape Town. It was, it was the million gang or something mm -hmm. in the Free State. It was the CCBs. Mm -hmm. It was the right wing which had to be, you know... Called out in Mafike, yeah. yes. So the country was just tottering. Mm -hmm. now, now, people don't re realize that how many people had died, thousands, mm -hmm. since we came out of jail, underground, and in prison. Mm -hmm. And Chris became a number. So it is that death that shook all of us. And we said, enough. This one and not further. If we didn't get that date, I don't think we would have controlled some of the people who were carrying guns, and we were carrying guns ourselves. Mm -hmm. But uh, South Africa was able to prevail. Mm -hmm. Both black and white stood shoulder, to sh uh, shoulder by shoulder to make sure that um, the country is not allowed to, to be burn. plunged. Yeah. To I'll tell you why. Chris Hunter, the man of peace, a soldier of his people, uh, the men who wanted democracy, who wanted change in South Africa, and who wanted a settlement. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine had we used his death to negate his views, mm -hmm. use his death to start the war? Mm -hmm. So we, we, we had just to bite, you know, excuse the pun, the bullet. Mm -hmm. We bit the bullet and said, um, uh, we were pumping, mm -hmm. let's go ahead. 
uh, in the name of Chris, let's struggle for more peace in the country. Yeah, uh, Mr. I call you Mr. Sohale, Minister, and at, at this time, you know, at, at this time, <laughs> you know, Minister, at, the, at, at, at that point in time, when we, you know, we watch that clip, we remember everything that happened at that time, um, and, and, and you see where South Africa is now today. Um, Mamadi Mpo, earlier on, we had on one of our clips and said, you know, it's, it's been 20 years of pain. It's now time to celebrate Chris and celebrate the life that he lived and what he died for. Are we going in the right direction in making sure that his legacy lives on? You know, uh, it's easy for people sometimes to say, um, Chris would have said, Chris would have done such as, I decry that. Mm -hmm. I want us to remember what he said, mm -hmm. not what he would have said. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that puts us into very unsafe territory yes. of wanting to advance our views, but using the matter. Yes. Now, state your case, write your story, make your own history. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what Chris did. Chris never said, so and so, Karl Marx, if he's alive today, would have said the, the following thing. Mm -hmm. so, so I don't want to get tempted into that, that area. Mm -hmm. It's very easy what Chris would have said today, mm -hmm. what he would have done. I, I think I want to say what he said and take a reflection mm -hmm. from those leaves in the book of history, how I would um, uh, apply what he said and what he did today. Certainly was against corruption. Mm -hmm. Chris decried corruption. Mm -hmm. So I should say, today we should use his status, mm -hmm. his, his activism, mm -hmm. his beliefs, his words to fight corruption. That's what we are expected to do, not him. He's not here to fight corruption. But, but uh, he also lost a comrade and a friend at that time. You know, the, the, and this would have been something that would have been like the brain's trust of the South African political mo mo movement at this time. And, and, and I'm sure you remember anecdotes, things that you used to say, what type that he was in uh, Angola, the meetings that you would have had, the secret meetings that you would have had, the contact that you would have, uh, have had with him. You know, what, what, what kind of a South Africa would you have had if we could have had the brain's trust of someone like Hassani at this point in well, time? We that's what we need. We, we, uh, I, uh, he's not here. We should, we should learn from the example of his method and, and say, Chris stood, what, what is unique about Chris? Education, um, Latin, g g g g Greek, that's what he studied, revolution. Many people are there. Chris' uniqueness is the courage of his convictions. But finally, let me tell you, Chief, people can have views, you can have beliefs. Um, we all have them. But it's stand up for these things, even when you are left alone. Yes. Even when you are ridiculed. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes you could lose a position mm -hmm. um, or your life. Mm -hmm. That's, Chris, Chris was about that. The, the courage of his convictions. He was a very courageous leader. You debate, you fight for your point to live another day. Mm -hmm. um, he fought for the openness of democracy within society within the ANC, as well as within the Communist Party, mm -hmm. where he belonged. Um, he believed that the strength of democracy, internal democracy, particularly within the Liberation Alliance, was discussion. And that's what we have to fight for every day. The tendency in the world is to try to close the space. If, if, if it was according to individuals, it's easy to close the space, mm -hmm. you know, so that I, I, I want to rule, I want to govern, I don't have time for you. The fight every day, relentlessly, to make sure that our voices are heard. The people of the Dorans want to be heard. And if they don't stand up without burning, without burning. If the people of Marikani don't stand up without throwing spears, you know, you must learn. You know, you to, to state a view without using a method of, of, of violence. Of violence. You, you, you want to stand up for development, for delivery. Don't burn a library because you're demanding houses. Don't burn a school because we are demanding a clinic, that type of thing, which is what people fall into. Stand up and let's see the courage of leadership when people want change and development to happen. That's the example of, of a Chris Honey. So, so we learn from such people. Martyrs are there to be instructed for us to go forward, but not for us to stand up and say, the martyr would have said, would have done that. No, you write that book today. That's your story. Before we end off, um, Minister, there's another uh, very, uh, an issue that we want to look at. The Mandela millions are now seem to be in a dispute. Your name has been brought into these where the children oh. are saying that they're trying to remove you from the companies. I mean, it's one of the top stories that they're leading with here. I've war over Madiba's millions. Story, yes, yes. Family to go to court to get control of companies. Oh, and shame. your name has been... And this is with regards to Nelson Mandela's... Um, uh, the, 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 the handprint and, and so on. And there's two companies that are listed there um, with regards to, to these. And you, George Bezos, as well as uh, Bali Chuena, or some of those people appointed as the shareholders in those companies. What's the story there? How are you going to do this? It's difficult this? because, you know, the story, somebody has spoke with George. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a dodgy story now. <laughs> we don't know what the story is about. Yes. 
you know, we're trustees of Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. He appoints you and we carry out his mission. Mm -hmm. And let's be very clear about that. Mm -hmm. He appoints you, we carry out the mission. So I, do, I still do not know what the quarrel the as of yet is about. Yeah, because we had that yesterday um, in the evening when George called me and we left that for George uh, to deal with. And you so, have, so you've had no conversations with the family? None of them no, have no. approached you I'm with here, regards I'm to here this. with you. I'm having a conversation yes, with you today. But, but I'm sure we'll be engaging with people mm -hmm. to find out precisely what lies behind this story. But I must put it very, very clear. Mm -hmm. As a colleague and as comrade of Nelson Mandela, if he appoints you to do a job, mm -hmm. do it. And you are not going to be daunted by anybody. And I remember the day when he got his first payment, he wanted you to remove the money from the bank and put it under the pillow because so much money you could, didn't understand putting it into, no, into no, the bank. No, no, not under the pillow. He, he, he didn't want to bank that money because yes. he said that was too much. And, uh, and, and we were saying we're getting a lot of money because in jail, I mean, we used to give you 10 rands, you 10 know, that's rands, a lot of money. Rands, yes. Yeah, but he was, he, he's not a money man. Mm -hmm. And um, wherever he is right now, God protect him. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think we want his name to be thrown into this type of... Of, of headlines, so 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 those that he asked to do uh, certain work mm -hmm. uh, in his name are committed. So we're behind uh, his personal friend, mm -hmm. George Bezos, in in in, in sorting out uh, the story. But I believe that there should be nothing dodgy about this. Okay, yeah. no, for sure. Thank you very much, okay, It's been an absolute pleasure having you. So, pose of wisdom, continue to live with us, okay, and remember Chris's uh, name forever and ever. Thank you very thank much. Thanks so much.